W. It's easy to imagine that being blind is a limitation that could end a visual artist's career. But for Denton-based artist John Bramblett, his lack of sight is what made his career skyrocket. His art has been sold in more than 120 countries, and if you go to the Bishop Arts District, you may see one of his beautiful murals. Hi, I'm John Bramblett. This is my guide dog, Eagle, and this is my beautiful wife, Jackie. Welcome to our home. My passion for art really started before I could walk. Like, I think I could draw before I could walk. And if for some reason in my brain, it just made sense. And um, we're, we're very little else does, but, but art does. But I didn't start painting though until I lost my eyesight. Before that, it was all drawing. Like I could do the blueprints for houses. I could draw a portrait of a person using charcoal, all this sort of stuff. But then after the eyesight went, um, I couldn't touch the lines anymore. So that's where paint came in because I could actually feel paint and I could touch it so I could start to draw again. So it was the loss of eyesight really that, um, that led to painting. I was born with ep epilepsy and then it developed into severe epilepsy and, and then later on, um, well I had, I had some neurological problems, had kidney problems, had a kidney removed, but then later on I ended up getting Ly Lyme's disease and this was like over 20 years ago, like 25 years ago or more. So Lyme's disease wasn't as common down here or even really know, known about it at the time. So my neurologists weren't really looking for anything else. I had the epilepsy. And, and so they just thought it was presenting in a weird way. So I was having these crazy seizures because I was having seizures where my breathing would stop, my heart would stop. It was causing damage to where the occipital lobe is and the, and the optic nerve goes in. So I ended up losing my eyesight and about 40% of my hearing. Um, but it was the, you know, the eyesight of course was the kicker. That was the one that was devastating at the time. I thought art had left my life forever. I, I literally drew every day of my life. I, drawing was always my way of dealing with things, with understanding things. So um, I would draw every day. I would just draw, draw, draw until I lost my eyesight. And I thought it was gone just like everything else. I didn't, I, it wasn't even a thought in my head, even though this is something I did all the way up until college every day, you know? And I became so angry and so depressed. I was learning everything that I needed to learn, like how to use a cane, the screen readers, braille, all these different things. <laughs> But then as I started learning how to travel independently and start using my sense of touch to be able to, to navigate, to be able to understand my surroundings, I started thinking, you know, maybe I can draw again. Like these streets that I travel are like lines you know, that cross each other. Maybe I can start making lines out of paint that, you know, that can help me navigate around a canvas. So my first step is, is I meet somebody. Usually I get inspired by the people around me and I'll feel their face and I'll see what they look like through touch. And then, and then I'll start imagining and I'll start thinking about a composition and I work the painting out in my mind before I ever touch a canvas. But then when I start drawing, I'm using lines that I can touch and feel. And it's sort of the same techniques that you would use using a white cane or, my, or like with my guide dog, like Eagle. Um, I'll draw lines, I can touch and feel the lines and as they intersect and cross, it lets me know where I am and what I'm doing. With the colors, I'll braille my paint. So I, I can actually just read the braille on the, on the paints and see what color it is. But then I change the way the paint feels as, as well. Like I'll, I'll mix different textures in with the paint. You know, the reason you make art is because you have something to say, but the difference now, I think, within is that now it's okay to talk about it. You know, 200 years ago, if you had a disability, if you had a different, um, it wasn't okay to, to speak aloud and to say it, and now we can, and I think that's brilliant. And the main thing, I think, is that creatives need to be nice to themselves. Like, like a creative person, they're often the nicest people you'll ever meet. They're so brilliant to everyone else, but, but they're, they're so hard on themselves. You know, if they have one little flaw on a creative work they're doing, that's all they see is that, that one little flaw, not all the amazing things that they did. So they need to be nicer to themselves, and, and I think you need to fail. I think you need to fail quite a bit. If you're not failing, then you're not trying enough new stuff, you know, and you gotta give yourself the, the freedom to be able to fail a little bit, you know, so you can, you can push yourself, you can get into those new realms and try out the new things.